I want to make a follow-up on my popular video about pooch bellies or indented abdomens that protrude out slyly. I've been getting a ton of questions about this recently, so I went to check it and it has hundreds of thousands of views. And I was like, wow, I should probably address this at this point because it's been a year and there are some things in that video I wish I would have said. That video has gotten a very positive response and it's helped a lot of people and a lot of people have seen some results from the exercise that I talk about within that video. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. However, I've received a lot of questions and a lot of comments that express concern, especially from females regarding this issue. Pooch bellies and dented abdomens are extremely common and absolutely nothing to be ashamed of or self-conscious about. I see it literally every single single day. And a lot of it is driven by genetics. I wish I made that more clear in the first video because I think a lot of people got the idea that they can get rid of it 100% with just a few breathing exercises. Now you can see significant improvements depending on the person, but it's really hard to change the structure of your entire skeleton and your overall respiration strategy associated with it. This could also be just a very healthy amount of body fat. However, depending on your own genetics, you store it in different places. Some people, it's going to be more in their lower abdomen. One question I've gotten a lot is, does this occur in only females or can this happen in males as well? And it can absolutely happen in both genders, but I've gotten more responses from females because unfortunately, there's this perpetuated idea that females need to have this flat toned stomach and that's unrealistic for a lot of people. So people need this healthy degree of body fat. With that in mind, let's break down the mechanics really quick as a recap. So some people have this genetic bias to where they have a skeleton that is biased towards a state of, think of it like inhalation. So their ribs are in this inhaled state, but in order for them to need to exhale, what they're going to do is kick on their side abs and they're going to compress from side to side. And as a result of that, you often see these ribs in the front start to internally rotate. So they have this angle right here that's more narrow in nature. But remember, they have this bias towards inhalation. So what ends up happening is that the diaphragm is stuck in this inhaled state where it is descended. Now the pressure gradient changes. And when we inhale further, because the diaphragm is still descended, that change in the pressure gradient and partially the line of pull of the fibers of the diaphragm itself causes that abdomen to be sucked inward and upward just a little bit or significantly depending on the person. One thing I didn't address in that video is the mechanics of the pelvic diaphragm as well. These people who are narrow and biased towards this inhalation state also have a pelvic floor that's descended just like their thoracic diaphragm is descended. So their pelvis is going to be opened up like this because if my hand is the pelvic floor and this opens up, that drops. An ascension of the pelvic floor is exhalation. So these bones would rotate in inhalation is like this. So they have a pelvic floor that is descended in many cases. So in order to make a meaningful change, we need to improve the breathing strategy, just like I talked about in that video. I'm going to give you some other exercises that can be very helpful for that, but we're also going to think about this pelvic diaphragm as well, because the pelvic diaphragm and the thoracic diaphragm absolutely have to work together for optimal respiration. A lot of these people have a tendency to be compressed from side to side and also compressed in the front right here. So what we want to do is promote expansion laterally in the front and also match up the pelvic diaphragm with the thoracic diaphragm. We want the ability for this pelvic diaphragm to rise up and these bones to go in like this. So here are some exercises you can do to help with that. For this first position, we're going to lie on our back with our knees bent and our whole foot flat. And we're going to do a little tuck of the hips so we can keep our ribs in a good position. So what that looks like is keeping the whole foot flat, we're going to try to pull the heels towards the butt but obviously the foot isn't going to move, just the hips are gonna be scooped under and you're going to feel your hamstrings on both sides engage. So the low back is totally flat, just the hips are maybe a centimeter or two off of the ground and that's all we need for this. So what we can do here is grab a little broomstick, a PVC pipe, whatever works for you, as long as it's pretty light. And we're going to start reaching this thing for the ceiling and this is going to be at shoulder height. And Taylor, what I'll have you do is just get a gentle reach and don't overdo it though. We don't want the sternum to collapse down. We just want this sternum, if there's a laser pointer coming out of it, it's pointing directly up at the ceiling, but you can still reach your arms a little further, protract them. And now what we'll do is we'll get a nice 
soft, full exhale. And that's going to look like she's kind of sighing out the air. So it's like a And we want to get a full exhale, but we don't necessarily want to get such a full exhale to where our sternum collapses down. So get maybe about a five to eight second exhale, nice and soft, until you feel like you got most of the air out. And then close your mouth and then inhale through your nose, get a nice full exhale. And what you'll feel like is your rib cage is expanding and the bar will naturally be pressed back because of the inhale, because these ribs opening up is going to push those arms back. And then we're gonna get another full exhale. The only thing we wanna watch out for here is when we inhale, we don't want these ribs to flare. We wanna make sure these ribs stay relatively down so the low back is flat. And as you go further and further back, it'll become more challenging for you to keep those ribs down. But again, remember the most important thing is the only reason why that bar is going back is because you're inhaling through your nose, not because you're trying to push it back. And you'll be getting that if you're able to get a full inhale and a full exhale. For this exercise, we're going to have a ball and place it in between our knees and get in this quadruped or all fours position. And we should have our hands underneath our shoulders and our knees underneath our hips. And just give that ball maybe a two, three out of 10 squeeze, nothing too much at all. And this is the important part now, keeping a soft bend in the elbows, we're going to push the ribs back just super slightly, just, just a little bit. And this sternum bone right here, if there was a laser pointer coming out of it, again, we gotta make sure that it's pointing down at the ground and it's not overly depressed or rounded. And then keeping the head neutral. You'll know if you're in a good position in your neck if you can talk easily there. So if my head's too far down or too far up, I can't talk very effectively. So just whatever feels natural, that's going to open your airway the most. And now, again, soften in the elbows, sternum is up, ribs back slightly. We're just going to take a nice full exhale, just like in the first exercise. And it's gonna be full, long, and then we're going to close our mouth and then get a nice full inhale through the nose. And we're going to feel some opening up of the front chest, potentially the lower ribs a little bit. And that's going to allow us to, again, get the ribs in a nice good position. An addition you can do to this exercise is take a band of moderate tension and then hook it around your hands like so, and then get in that same exact position and just do the same exact thing. So what this is gonna do is it's going to close off a little bit of your back rib cage and it's going to help you open up more of your front side rib cage, which for a lot of people, these very narrow angles, that can be really helpful. And all you need to do is use this as a reference to get a little bit of a pushback and Again, keeping the sternum straight down without overly doing it. Just do the same exact breathing, same exact exercise. Something else you could do that's really easy is just get in a position where you have about three to five, max six inches of elevation and get your knees on it. What we're going to do now is get in an inverted position, very similar to the first exercise that I showed in my earlier pooch belly video. So we're going to place our elbows on the ground and our hips are going to be higher than the level of our head and we're going to slightly push the floor away, again, keeping our sternum up, and then, if you need to, a tiny slight tuck of the hips, and then that same breathing applies here, in through the nose, out through the mouth, keeping the neck neutral. Pooch bellies are nothing to be ashamed of. It is nothing to be self-conscious about. It is so incredibly common but I'm totally fine addressing it because honestly, a lot of the exercises I talked about within this video also will help you breathe, move, and feel better as a whole. So this is just a side effect in terms of improving the pooch belly, but really what I'm after is I wanna help you feel better. I wanna help you move better. And these exercises can definitely help with that. 